G'day, I'm Ash. I hope you've enjoyed my recent video. I certainly had fun making that one. This is the SU-17M2, and while I intend to make coverage on all of the content aircraft-wise that came to the new patch in ICWA, I had a stroke, then that's fine, because today we're taking a look at the SU-17M2. By the way, uh, if you've been enjoying the content, let me know what you've enjoyed the most recently, because I have no idea. I'm just producing things for the sake of doing it. Anyway, SU-17M2, rank 6, 10.3. 30mm cannons times 2 with 160 rounds. You've got four R60 air to airs. Mwah, perfect, beautiful R60s. And the guns are pretty good too. Now, this is the first variable geometry sweat wing aircraft in War Thunder. It is a bit of a gimmick, but it leads to possibilities like the MiG-23 or F-14 or F-111. So I guess this is just the next step in evolution for, well, from War Thunder's perspective. Anyway, moving on to some gameplay real quick. This is going to be a shorter video. I've produced quite a lot of content recently, and I've streamed quite a bit. So if you're interested in checking out the live streams, the link is in the description down below. But regardless, SU-17, variable swept wing. What's there to say about this thing? Really? Every content creator on Earth has covered this machine, and <laughs> there is a reason for its success. Simply, it has an airspawn. Now we've spawned into a match, and we're already getting targeted by what I believe to be sparrows, I think. Yep, there's the first one. Now, I have always loved playing chicken with a, a sparrow, because there's just usually quite a lot of them. If you manage to fly underneath him, that'll be perfect. Sort of waggling the aircraft around. I don't fly this thing particularly well, and there is one reason for that. R60s. R60s do all the work, and they continue to carry this team. Now, lucky shot there with the guns. Guns are utterly fantastic on this machine. And uh, this doesn't necessarily end too well for me here. Pulling into negative Gs and overloading is not necessarily a good thing to do. I'm slow right now. I'm in a dive. I am particularly scared of things that might be hitting me up from the rear. Mind you, most of the team's already overpassed me anyway. I'll just double check because always be aware of your surroundings. So much so I didn't even realize the friendly was there. Try to get a few more cheeky shots off. Don't even get a thing. I need to lead that aircraft a little bit more. I go after that F4? No. Okay, he's completely and utterly broken. Moving on. There's another F4 up here. We'll go after the F8U. Mm, F8U looks like a fun target. No, we'll go after the F8U. Re regain uh, lock and Fox 2. 3, 2, 1, splash. There we go. Again, it's all about the R60s and the air spawn. Provided you direct yourself in front of the team, make sure you keep your wits about you, there is no way that this machine isn't necessarily going to be a very good interceptor i don't know why it gets an attacker spawn there you go three kills in under what um, two minutes crazy absolutely crazy this thing is now jumping into the next match uh, and we see here manual control and we're going to switch to manual sweep allowing us to have 100 percent control over our wing sweep now it is automatic to start off with there is a key bind you'll have to set and then you'll also have to set a variable uh, what is it? Variable control, or relative control, and then it will allow you to actually position the wings where you want them. Now, I'd say for ground forces, this thing would be more capable aircraft. Obviously, it can carry those fancy Russian ground to surface or air to surface. I don't even know what those, those sort of rocket things are, the manually guided stuff. I don't really dabble in that kind of thing. I'm not really at the battle rating where that actually matters at per se, but this thing is really good at what it does. Intercept a spawn, fly straight, you know, climb a little bit, find the enemy, go among the part of the enemy, and then just absolutely ambush them from behind when they least expect it. For example, this EJ and this F4C. Now, I was half expecting him to sort of evade that, but apparently he's not paying attention. First strike, all right, that's on a bullion F4C. There we go, like that. And this isn't even with guns. Two aircraft down already. <laughs> and this is where the bad flying comes into play. I'm just sort of throwing this thing around left, right, and wherever I can. Immediately, I should be turning around. I don't know why I hesitate, sort of looking around and sort of doodling and twiddling my thumbs. Come on, get the aircraft to turn around. There we go. Think. Think, Ash. Think. It's going to take a while for the old Mark 1 brain to uh, come into play here. <laughs> I will say I'm a little bit slow sometimes. But that's okay. Look at my aiming in my SU-11 video that I did yesterday when I was turn fighting and, and having a ball just rolling with a Kika. It's the most fun I've had in a long while, actually. Even though I hadn't actually done anything with those guns, but hey, doesn't necessarily matter. 
got the Harrier selected right now. And I just want to just hammer this aircraft down towards those enemies. I just want all of the things. I don't know why. Now, I could have saved a little bit of time by diving directly in there, but there's an F4A up to my right. I'm sort of debating what to go after. Well, we're going to probably launch one at this F4C if he doesn't like, necessarily turn. He's not turning. Okay. Get him within a close range. Fox 2. Away we go. Or oh, in the Russian equivalent. There we go. Shadow Strike times 3. Again, this is all this thing is. This is why I'm going to title the video R60 Coast Whoosh. Because honestly, it's a lifesaver in this machine. It was a bit of a pain to grind this machine. I mean, this thing I, have, I had to grind myself. I haven't unlocked all the modules yet, but that Harrier is going to eat some. Ready? Three, two, one. There we go. And with good positioning and decent piloting, you're going to manage to put yourself in an area, or at least <laughs> in an airspace, where you can decide what contacts you want to go after. And that's a fantastic feeling. F4E appeared behind me there. He's going straight after a MiG-21. That MiG-21 will eat him for days. Well, no, he won't actually, because the F4 just completely and utterly nails him. Take that back. There's an A7D below me, and these are the last two guys on the enemy team. I'm getting locked on from the front here. This F4E thinks he's going to be clever. So clever that I managed to duck and weave between that, and the MiG-21 Biz comes along and cleans him up. In the meantime, let's overload our aircraft, because we're doing 10 Gs, and, you know, overloading is, is particularly fun. There it is, we've managed to break our, uh, <laughs> our pilot there. We're going to head towards that A7D and see if we can go get a kill on the A7. It would have been an ace had Ash not been a little bit of a stupid bugger. Here he is. I don't know where those shots went. Clearly didn't go anywhere near him. He managed to get the berth on me and has nailed my left wing. So you can affectionately say I've got a hole in my left wing. Anyway, that MiG-21 Biz comes out of nowhere and uh, absolutely smacks him. So that's the end of that game. Mind you, the biggest problem isn't necessarily that this aircraft gets an airborne. I think that this thing's broken enough as is. But the fact that a lot of other attacker types and, and, and aircraft types and airframes do get their airborne, for, for example, the Harrier, etc., etc., I don't think that this thing with an airborne would be as effective. It's a decent airframe, and honestly, I wouldn't expect anything less, but there's something to be said about the way that they decided to implement all those attacks jet attackers into the fact that they get an air spawn on every single map just seems like a bad decision and what do you think let me know in the comments down below so yeah perfectly good airframe i think the sweat wing factor is a little bit of a niche considering it takes a long time for you to land anyway there isn't really a, a benefit to having your, your wings forward swept or should i say retracted in in this case let alone, um, I don't know, in, in, in a usable sort of sense for turn fighting with, with these kind of uh, wings. At the speeds you're going in, it clapped by another missile-driven aircraft. So there is real no point for you to really use the variable uh, swept wing aircraft in this game. I don't think there is a point to it. It's a bit of a niche novelty like VTOL aircraft. At least they can do something. Mind you, this thing tears an utter ass because, well... It's got R60s. And as the old prophecy says in Soviet times, R60 goes whoosh. And that's all I have for you today. Short video. I'm kind of getting exhausted at doing videos, but that's okay. We'll continue on. We'll see you in the next one. All right. My name is Ash. I'll catch you in the next one. Cheerio.